Welcome back to my channel. Today I am doing my March favorites. Um, March has been a better month than February in some ways, in some ways not, but I do have quite a bit of products to talk about. I initially, like every month, thought mm, I don't really have that many products, but after playing with you know, the products looking around, I'm like, hmm, I actually liked quite a few in March. So if you guys are interested, continue watching. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Tanya. I'd love for you to subscribe down below. Um, and let's grab my water or drink and get into the makeup. So the way I do my favorites, I try to put on my face as many products as I can uh, and just show you guys inserts of those clips. Um, I feel like that's helpful for you guys to kind of see the products in action. And I try to pick products that maybe I didn't show as much on camera uh, because many of these you've probably seen throughout my videos. So let's start with primers. I have found such good primers this past couple of months. I'm going to start with the Danessa Myricks. This is her Yummy Skin Glow Serum Primer. Um, well, I don't even know if it's a primer, but I use it as a primer. Um, it is a very nice serum-y feel like glowy primer. Um, I really like the way it stays on the skin. I like the way it goes under makeup. I love the glow that it has. It's not too much, but it's it's good. Um, and also it gives a slight stickiness to it um, where the foundation seems to last really well under. I like to use this one mainly with like products that are a little bit more matte on top of it, but yeah, it's a beautiful product. Uh, it comes in two colors. Mine here is Main Squeeze and I will be picking up the darker one for winter. Uh, I'm sorry, for summer. <laughs> Oh yes. Uh, yes, I want the deeper one for summer because I feel like you could put that under any foundation and it'll give like a bronzier look. I may be wrong, but we'll see. Um, another primer is this Vanish Hourglass Primer. Uh, I really like it. It's kind of good for many things. It's good. I wouldn't say, oh, it's going to moisturize your skin, but it does have a good moisturizing feeling compared to her Veil Primer or their Veil, veil Primer. Um, I was still thinking of them as some eye rags. Um, but I like the way this feels on the skin. It's not drying and it's really smoothing. It helps with pores. It helps with longevity and just overall, it's a very nice smoothing primer. I can use this primer with pretty much any foundation. I think it works really, really well with all of them. Um, and I've really been enjoying it. Actually, I haven't touched my Tatcha Silk since I've discovered these. I think these are new and I'm like excited, but um, yeah. And the most favorite primer and most precious primer that I own is this Tom Ford. This is the Traceless Soft Matte Primer and it is absolutely glorious. It has a beautiful packaging, you just twist it. Um, now one negative, the one negative that I have is that right here, the product gets gunked up. See that white, that's the product. So the product kind of stays there and then it dries. And then when you have to pump again, you have that ball of dried product. It drives me insane. I feel like I'm wasting product. So I really don't like that about this, but everything else is absolutely fantastic. It is a soft matte primer. It is extremely smoothing, probably the most smoothing primer I own. Um, you put it on and it becomes almost like a powder in the end. It's it's a beautiful, interesting finish. Um, yeah, and it makes my foundation last all day long. It keeps oil at bay, but it's not drying. Uh, and it's a very, very smoothing. It's also an arm and leg. So now moving on to foundations, I have so many, <laughs> uh, so many foundations that I've loved, but I'm going to touch on 
three this month because I've already done so many videos on foundations. I've done my uh, ranking all new foundations. I can link that below. But I'm going to start with um, Kosas right here. I really enjoy this foundation. Whenever I feel like not wearing a ton of makeup, but I want to look a little bit put together, I go for this one. It has a beautiful glow. It's very light on the skin. The texture is really light, and I wear it as a light foundation overall. I use very little of it. It goes a long way. Uh, it doesn't have go a long way in the sense that it has a lot of coverage, but the actual product, I feel like I can uh, spread, spread it around easily uh, so I really like it it's good it's I'd say the price is right I like the ingredients and it's just it's just a good everyday foundation the second one is this Givenchy Prism Libre Skin Caring Matte Foundation and I am wearing this today I wanted to use it on camera a little bit more because I feel like the other ones I've shown you more um, but this one is a more matte finish but it is soft matte it has a slight glow to it um, and it is just so perfecting on the skin i would say this is a medium coverage but you can build it up um, i wear it mostly as a medium and it has such a beautiful finish it is natural finish it's not super matte it's not glowy whatsoever I would consider this to be more of a matte foundation but it's not drying at all and it spreads nice and even when you apply it uh, I actually love pairing this with the Danessa Myricks primer because that one has a little bit of a glow and this one on top of it is just so beautiful um and i've been enjoying a little bit more of a matte foundation i think it lasts really well and it's very perfecting um the color i have is 3n250 and then in the costas i have the wrong color it's 170 and it's just it's not it's too light. Um, I will have to pick up another color. Uh, and moving on to the third foundation, it is this Makeup Forever HD Skin. Um, I love this one so much. It reminds me of the Lisa Eldridge foundation, but a little bit more easy to work with. Um, it has a medium coverage. It has a matte finish, but the matte, like the Givenchy, is not drying at all. This actually is the most skin-like foundation that I own. Um, not because it has the glow and it's soft and radiant. It's because it literally looks like my skin. Um, it's a very light when you apply it. It gives decent coverage and it just looks like my skin. I apply it with my fingers, just one small pump. And it just evens out my skin tone, lasts great, great amount of time. Um, and it's absolutely beautiful. All right, concealers. Um, Cletipo concealers, I've done it. I've gotten another color because I like it that much. I have here the color 4 Almond and 3 Beige. And I love this concealer so much. It's so easy and I've been gravitating towards this one a lot. I feel like in March I haven't worn a ton of makeup um, more skin easy makeup and because of that I gravitate towards this one so much because it's so easy to apply it's easy to blend in I just tap it and it's perfect uh, it lasts so well throughout the day and it has a beautiful natural finish and it looks like skin there you go the beige was a little bit too brightening for me so I got the almond and now it's like perfect match. Another concealer that I've used quite a bit is the Kosas concealer. I think because I had the Kosas foundation I wanted to match uh, but it's an amazing concealer. I feel like I've talked about this since I started my channel. Uh, I have mine in 2.5 C and I think the color works. I've been struggling with the colors but I think this one actually works um, and yeah I've been using it if I want a good medium coverage but it's luminous it's great also the makeup HD concealer I've used that one a lot as well this one right here this has more of a natural finish it's a very creamy um, yeah and I've, I've used this as well so those are the three concealers that I've used 
a lot. The LYS, oh, of course, I've used that one a lot in February and in March. Um, what else? I think I think those are the few concealers I've used a lot this month. Powders. I have discovered a new favorite powder, and I think I've used it almost every time I did my makeup. That is the Makeup Forever. This is the Ultra HD Micro Finishing Powder loose powder. Uh, there's another one that I bought initially and I thought it was this one. I like that one as well, but this one, it is like air. It is so soft. It is just not there. <laughs> it does the job and it leaves. So it is beautiful for me that hates powders. I enjoy this. I feel like I've used quite a bit. I actually got the smaller one because I'm like, I'm not gonna use it that much. I just kind of want to try it and I'm I'm going through it. So that is a fantastic powder. For contour, I have used this one right here quite a bit. This is the Patrick Ta She Statuesque. Uh, I kind of feel bad talking about this because it's out of stock, but if you have it, it's amazing. I actually haven't used the bronzer. The bronzer color is not my favorite on me. I actually think it looks slightly muddy. I've been waiting. I've been waiting so long to get the medium shade and uh, it's out of stock since forever. Um, but the contour I use so much, I have a huge dent in it, can you see? I like it because it's so soft. Uh, it give, It's a true contour on me and it blends in super duper fast. I like that it's cream and it's, it's perfect, it's perfection. I just, the bronzer I think is just a little bit muddy. In the winter when I'm really light, I can pull that off, but I need I need the medium shade of that. And then of course, my West Atelier Biscuit uh, contour, I use it so much. I did pull out this Charlotte Tilbury Nudegasm face palette and it is absolutely glorious. I've been using it quite a bit this month. I think I just, pulled it out once and I just can't stop using it. I do not like powder contours. It just feels wrong. <laughs> uh, I don't like that I can't control the like the product quite as well as the cream um, and usually it just looks fake. But this contour right here, I really do like it. It has a really nice color to it and sometimes I combine it with this. This is pretty intense though with that. Um, but it's really, really beautiful. The blush is absolutely amazing. The highlighter, oh, so, so pretty. All This whole palette's beautiful. I even like this one. I combine it with this one and kind of make a bronzer out of it. I really like it. Also, if I'm really tan, I use this one to contour. So overall, this is such a good palette and it's easy. I think in March, I've just gone for easy makeup, like something fast. Because I've been doing my makeup a lot more in my bedroom, uh, I've been kind of picking a few things here and there and then having it in my bedroom. So I would kind of pick things that can do multiple things at once. Um, so yeah. For bronzer, I have used my Victoria Beckham quite a bit. Um, I mean, this is a staple in my collection by now. Uh, it's very dirty because I cleaned my brush on it. Um, I cleaned the product off. Uh, but yeah, this is the one in shade number two and it is absolutely perfection. It's a matte, but it's soft on the skin. Another bronzer that I've used quite a bit this month. It's this Westman Atelier one. I've had it for quite some time. I bought it before Christmas, I think. Um, and I bought it for my full face Westman Atelier and that kind of got postponed. And finally I filmed that one. And ever since I've been reaching for this one a lot. This is in Coupe du Soleil. Um, and it is the lightest one. And I really like it. It's a very soft, beautiful color it's it doesn't have shimmer in it but it has a, a sheen to it it it's still matte but it's a beautiful sheen because the powder is so soft and blendable i really like it i like the color i like the bronze that i get from it and i think it just 
it has something special. I can't put my finger on it. I think it's the color combined with the texture and the way it blends on the skin. I feel like my bronzer always looks really pretty when I wear this one. For blush, I have used my Danessa Myricks quite a bit. I've used both of them. Actually, I've used the pink one more just because I've done kind of some summery looks. Um, and yeah, these are absolutely wonderful. Uh, so those are definitely a favorite. A discovery for March was this one from Cleta Poe. This little guy is so expensive. Um, this is the blush cream in number three, and this is absolutely gorgeous. It's what I'm wearing right now. And let me tell you, this is pigmented, but it blends in so soft. I bought this one because you guys recommended it. Um, and there's some that have more of a glow shimmer in them. This is matte, uh, but it has a beautiful sheen to it. It's almost like um, a putty. It's a, it feels like a putty. It's cream putty, uh, and it, it goes a long way. You just need a little bit. It works absolutely great with fingers. It works great with a lot of different brushes. I really love this one uh, and I'm really glad I tried it. Cletipo had 15% off at some point and I got it then in my local Nordstrom and it is so pretty. You guys were so right recommending that one. And then another blush that I've used so much, it's the Patrick Tashi's Blushing. I, I've been using this one a lot. Uh, the Cledipo I've discovered probably a couple weeks ago, but this one I have discovered you know, last month, I think, and it's absolutely gorgeous. I love the cream. I love the powder. I just love everything about the blush. I like the color, the application. He needed this color in his collection because it is absolutely beautiful, blushing, a little pink, but not too intense. It's just such a good color. And I think a lot of people could use that color. Highlighters. I feel like I haven't used a ton of highlighters just because I had more glowy cheeks, but the one I have used a lot this month is this Dior. This is the Dior Backstage Glow Palette. I think this is, yes, number two glitz. I love this one so much. I've had it for forever since it came out. And this is the color that I just adore. I really have used this so much. I can see from the side that I'm going to hit pan. Not, it's not far away. Um, I really like that color because it's just such a soft peachy color. It's not too intense. There's no actual glitter in it. It's a very soft, so beautiful. So, so beautiful. Uh, so I put that one on most of the time. And then if I really want to pop, I can go with this pink right here. This has a little bit of a punch to it, but it's still elegant and soft. And I put that just like right on the top of my cheekbones. Uh, and I think that really makes my cheeks glow without them being way too much. So this is absolutely stunning. Now the packaging, even though I like it, it feels cheap. This is not a cheap product, but it really, I don't know, the whole packaging feels like it's not very expensive. And of course, Westman Atelier Pot de Peche, it's, do I have to say anything else? I pulled these ones out because I've used them, I wanna say three times this month, which is a lot for me because I just use Pot de Peche most of the time. Um, but I really enjoy these. These are a very soft powder, Laura Mercier Le Celestial Light uh, and Honey Star. This is the Translucent Loose Setting Powder. This is not a setting powder, this is a highlighter. Um, these are beautiful. I actually combined them because the lightest one is very bright. Uh, it's too much for me. And this one could work, but I like to combine them. I could see how if you really went for that really glowy skin, you could get a really feathery brush and kind of graze your skin with it. But I would not use as this as a finishing powder. I, I would use this as a highlighter, but they're really soft, really almost looks like a cream product, which is probably why I enjoy these so much. Eyeshadow palettes. I haven't worn a ton of eyeshadow this month. I have used my Victoria Beckham liners 
almost every time I do an eye look. I just use those, smudge it, and I'm done. I have all her colors and they're all absolutely gorgeous. But I will share with you three eyeshadows that I've enjoyed. Uh, first of all is this Tom Ford. This is the new formula in Smoky Quartz. I've talked about this a lot. Since it came out, I use it so much. It is beautiful. It is an arm and a leg uh, for only four shadows, but I love them. They're boring, but they have a good undertone, a great blendability. Even this, where is it? This dark shade. Can you see? It almost has a sheen to it. All of these have such a beautiful finish. Like, look at those. Don't they look like creams? They are called cream. I color quad creme. Uh, so stunning. All of them. Oh, I just love this one so much. I used it quite a bit um, boring looks, but they're great. Also, this palette I've just discovered, I think last week, but it is so lovely um, and it's not an arm and a leg. This is the Nabla side-by-side -side nude palette. And guys, this is so beautiful. I have reached for it almost every time I did my eye look since I bought it. It has all the perfect browns. There's cool tones, there's neutrals, there's warm tones. The shimmers are absolutely gorgeous. Look at this one right here or this one. I mean, that's on top of the Tom Ford, but you get the point. Even this one right here, it has such a beautiful, like gray taupey color. So, so stunning. It's actually what I'm using today. I took Bonjour uh, all over the lid, kind of in the crease, went with Burnt Sienna, which is a beautiful browny reddish undertone. Um, and I just kind of built that out in my crease. Um, all over the lid, I went with Better Society, which is probably my favorite shade in this palette. It is almost like a topper but it has a base to it. Also, I put a little bit of body and soul, just, just a touch. This one is definitely a bit more textury, a bit more glitzy, um, but still so beautiful. And then the Ray of Light is also stunning, stunning light color. I put it in my inner corner. And I also took Clan to darken up the look just a little bit. This is a beautiful, it's almost like a cement, gray color that has a little bit of brown in it. It's absolutely stunning. I really think this palette is so gorgeous, so user-friendly. The, the quality is incredible. The shimmers, I like that there's different textures in there. And I'm not necessarily a girl that loves a ton of color, but I love textures, layering things. Um, and I really like the browns as well, like it's just such a good palette. And then the last palette I'm going to talk about is the Natasha Denona Pastel palette. I've done five looks with this palette. I've done a reel on Instagram with this one. I love it. Um, it's, it's something that I don't have a lot of in my collection because I don't use a ton of color. Even as a makeup artist, I, I do a lot of bridal, just events, makeup, things like that that don't need super intense colors like these. Uh, I do play for maybe some photo shoots here and there with some color, but many times I, I don't gravitate towards these, but they're so pretty and you can make these wearable. Uh, it has such stunning pastel colors, but they're buildable and they stay in place. I think the issue that I usually have with pastels is that they kind of fade away. They're kind of chalky, but not these. These blend really well. They build on each other really, really well. And the colors don't get muddy. Um, so you can kind of still see the pink, still see the blue. It's just a really good, a good palette. Also, I really like the shimmers. I love this yellow right here. I think it's really pretty. This pink right here, it's like a duochrome. It has some blue in it. It's really pretty. So overall, I really like the palette. I actually used it maybe three, four times, which is a lot for me in a month. 
Moving on to mascara. I have here two mascaras that I've loved. Uh, the Pat McGrath, this is the Dark Star Mascara. Loving this so much. It gives a lot of volume, a lot of like vavoom. Um, you'll see the lashes from afar. Uh, loving it. It's also separating. It's really good. I had the full size once and actually hated it. I thought it didn't really do much. Uh, and it was drying, but really this one is really good. So I think I probably got a bad one, but a new mascara. This was sent to me uh, by Isam Mascara, and this is so good. This is what I'm wearing today, and this is, a, it's very lengthening and separating. I, I think it gives volume, but I wouldn't say like the Pat McGrath, oh my gosh, it gives you a ton of volume. This gives a lot of separation, a lot of definition, a lot of length, and it makes my lashes look so incredible. I have learned to love it. Now, it stays in place so, 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 so well. However, when I wear it on the bottom lashes, I've seen it... Um, not crumble, but I may see one dot of mascara uh, under my eyes, but I can just sweep that away. So it's an actual mascara dot. It didn't smudge. It's just like one dot that is, you can pick it up pretty much. So on my lower lashes, it's okay. I like the way it looks and it doesn't smudge, but I feel like maybe because of the texture, it can, uh, crumble a little bit on the lower lashes. I have worn this today on my lower lashes as well and I'm kind of regretting that because throughout the video I feel like I have to check if I have mascara under my eyes. So not the best for lower lashes. However, I have the hardest time with mascara on my lower lashes. I naturally have very long lashes and uh, you know, everything smudges. So the only mascara that does not smudge is the Thrive Cosmetics one because it's a tubing one. So that's the only mascara that I can use on my lower lashes and be confident in. However, the Isam is so beautiful. My top lashes, absolutely gorgeous and great release. Lips. I have been gravitating towards this Makeup by Mario lip cream so much. This is in pinky brown and I really like it. I gave it a good review when I reviewed it, um, but I really love the color. I love the way it looks on my lips. I love how it stays on my lips. It's a little drying. It's, it's not drying, but it's not moisturizing. So if you have dry lips, I would not go for this, but if you have normal lips, I don't think it makes them drier, but that's the color right there. And I kind of usually smudge it a little bit so it becomes like that it's so beautiful and it stays so well in place that's why i gravitate towards this one because it stays in place so well i pair it pretty much all the time with the kitten liner by m cosmetics it's like the perfect color those two um so i've been using that actually a lot a lot it's in my purse and i think because it stays on so well it's beautiful it's comfortable i wear it another lipstick i've been wearing are these from givenchy it's the sheer velvet lipsticks i have the shade 10 and 16. 16 is the one i wore in my i guess it's not like my last video but a couple videos ago or is it my last? But everybody asks, like, what's on your lips? What's on your lips? And it's this, the number 16. The formula is absolutely incredible. This right here is the Makeup by Mario. But this one has such a beautiful finish to it. It's sheer and velvety and matte. It's just so, so good. Now, the problem I have with these is that, um, not this color, but the color number 10 that I'll show you next, it, the... It's just ruined. It's kind of came out. I think I showed this in another video, but I still absolutely love it. So this is the color 10 and it's more of a pinky, um, cool-ish tone right there. And see, it's like sheer, like you can kind of see through it. It's such a beautiful, beautiful product and interesting formula, even though it's kind of broken. It's like, look at that. It's like disgusting. Um, I still wear it 
so, so much because the formula is amazing. And then I've been wearing this combo a lot because it's just easy, comfortable, and I can reapply easily. This is a, my Charlotte Tilbury Iconic Nude Lip Liner. This is the most like my lips lip liner. Like when I put it on, I don't really see if it's a lip liner, is it my lips? And I really like that because with something like this, this is the Dior Lip Glow um, in the shade, I think one. I don't want color. I want this pretty much is like a balm, a pink balm. But the way it turns on my lips, I'll swatch it right here. The way it turns on my lips is just a pretty slight pinky lip. And I think it's really, really pretty. And I like the combination with this because I feel the need for a lip liner, but I don't want the look of a lip liner. So I'm gonna reapply. This is so nice, moisturizing. They're kind of addictive. Uh, I haven't really had one before. I don't think so I purchased this one this month and I've been loving it I've been hooked I've wanted to buy the other ones the new addict ones and I will at my Sephora sale um, because they didn't have them in stock the one I wanted so I didn't buy it but I will order it with the Sephora sale um, talking about the Sephora sale I will do a video on Thursday, I think. Thursday morning, there should be my Sephora recommendations. Uh, so yeah, stay tuned for that. But this is all the makeup I wanted to share with you guys. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I personally absolutely love favorites video. It's a comforting, easy video to watch for me. And it's very informative because people actually share things that they've actually worn and loved that month. So I hope it was enjoying for you and helpful in a way or another. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. It really helps my channel grow and push my videos out. Um, and I'll see you guys in my next video, which will be Thursday with my Sephora VIB recommendations. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.